The Charge Syndrome Foundation Speaker Series. Calendar Systems, presented by Robbie Bleha. Rather than uh, schedules, I like to think about uh, calendar systems okay. for children with charge. Uh, Dr. Jan van Dyke was the person who first introduced this strategy of using calendar systems with children. And um, at first, people were thinking, a calendar? I mean, I have a calendar in my kitchen. You know, I've got a calendar in my purse, but how would I give a calendar to a child who isn't reading or isn't communicating? So how would you use a calendar with a kid like that? And so one of the things I really respected about Dr. Van Dyke is he developed a way to um, design timepieces for children who couldn't use a traditional format. And really, when you think about a timepiece, um, they're just kind of a series of chunks, like a piece of paper that's um, kind of divided into a grid, you know, with seven across and what maybe five down. I mean, it's a monthly calendar, but it's a series of chunks of time discrete areas that represent a segment of time. And he took that and he developed timepieces for children um, that were more uh, concrete, like a box, a you know, a long box. Some of the things that timepieces have in common are that they are tangible, they have tangible sections. They uh, represent that, chi that individual child's time concepts and time needs. Because some for some children, their future is the next activity. And that's as far into to the future as their thinking. And some children go to bed at night wondering if their grandmother's gonna be there in the morning or if things are going, they wake up in the morning and wonder if they're gonna go swimming that afternoon. So their time frame is really more of a day. And so all children have a time frame that they're currently functioning in, and you need a timepiece that represents that to them so you can discuss with them the segments or activities that are going to be happening to them and in what order, which that's very important, the order or sequence that their day is going to unfold. What should you think about while developing an individualized timepiece? One of the most important aspects of developing a calendar is deciding on your timepiece. And they need to be very individual. The last thing you want to do is walk in a classroom and have four very different kids with deaf blindness and four identical calendars because there's no way that all of those kids have the same time frame necessarily or that all of the kids like read the best because some of those kids are purple kids and some like yellow and some kids like patterns and some kids don't like to touch plain wood. They want something soft. So they want something lined so they don't encounter any rough edges. So it's physically attractive to the kids or in terms of their sensory system, the timepiece is attractive and manageable and so they're very individual. So um, an individualized timepiece is a very important um, step on developing a calendar system. What else is important when developing a calendar system? Another important piece of developing a calendar system beyond the timepiece is having a communication system already set up with the child that's meaningful for that kid. Some of the children use objects to represent the next activity, like if they're gonna be cooking and they absolutely love metal spoons because they bang so well, or they're always cold when you pick them up because they're metal, you have a metal spoon to represent cooking. Um, you have objects that, from that child's perspective, represent things. So we have object kids. So the calendar will use objects. Some of our kids use parts of objects because they can be a little more abstract. Some kids use pictures, photographs, different things. So you have a tangible uh, system of communicating, um, even if braille pieces of paper. Every calendar system will incorporate that child's communication. It's really important 
to have that communication system in place before you even think about designing a calendar system because um, you really need um, a way to trade information with the child. So that's a priority. Once that's done, then you can start thinking about ways to use it and the calendar system is a great way to use it. Why is a calendar system important for someone with charge? The reason I, I think about calendar systems, maybe even more than schedules, is that calendar systems are really critical for human beings. I think it's really interesting and you can go to any point in time or any culture and they had a way to represent time and talk about time. Because I think there's just an innate human need to know what is going to happen to you next and a way to strike a bargain with other people about when things are going to happen um, so everybody's clear on when that's going to occur and you need a, a uniform time system to do that. And so I think having a calendar system really is essential for children with charge because all human beings need a calendar system. It, it goes without saying that children with charge must have one as well. I think that um, one of the reasons human beings use uh, calendar systems is to be able to have the security of knowing what's going to happen in their future. I think not only is it important for a sense of security and control, but I think it's very tied into hope and happiness and I think it's very much a mental health issue of having some security and control over your future. And having a calendar lets you know what's coming up and when. Also gives you an opportunity to schedule some of your own things and some of those slots to put your heart's desire in there and have something to look forward to. Um, it helps you kind of get through stuff you don't want to do because you know, okay, I really don't want to go to gym today. But after gym, I get to have popcorn. I get to have popcorn or I get to um, play with a friend. So it's a way to kind of negotiate your way through the day and everybody needs that or we would get nothing done. What is it about children with charge that makes a calendar system particularly helpful? Uh, well, all human beings uh, need timepieces and need a way to um, anticipate and organize the future. Um, I think it's essential for children with charge syndrome to have this. Um, because they have trouble accessing information from the environment, sometimes they miss cues um, that other people pick up that uh, things are going to happen. And this is a way of kind of making a, a contract with the child about what their day is going to be like and to honor it. And I think that if they have a calendar that they can go check and verify, that it does, it's gonna do a lot to reduce anxiety. How does wait mean yes? Another way I think um, calendars are really helpful for children with charge syndrome, I think a real emotional experience is involved with the um, effort of waiting I think waiting is hard for everybody. I think that's why on telephones they play music for us because we can't wait. You know, it kind of keeps us on the phone and pacifies us and on our computers a little line goes across the bottom to let it know that, yeah, it's about to start. And I think, I think that shows how much neurologically we need help waiting. And it's certainly going to be ch true for children with heart syndrome. I think waiting is a skill that has to be taught. And I think one thing that calendars help do is it teach them that the word wait means yes. If they are concerned about when are they going to go swing, I think if it's scheduled in their calendar, you can take them over to the calendar and say, you're talking about swinging, yes. You verify you're understood and the fact that you take the time to talk to them about it, they need that time to process the information and de-escalate. 
And I think just saying, we're going to talk about this so that you feel wonderful. And to go to the calendar and say, yes, you are swinging and it waits. To give po something positive to that term, because these kids are told all the time, you need to wait, you need to wait. And it may sound like no. And waiting, we can't wait. As, you know, adults, mature adults, we can't wait without computer lights and music on the phone. And they need to help wait. And if you val validate, I understand, yes, it's going to happen. And with the calendar, that's, that's a promise. It's extremely reassuring. And you can even show them, you're right here on your calendar, and we're gonna do this and this, and then you swing, yes. You can show them how long they're waiting. And it also, as a teacher or a parent, it gives you a sense of this, how much can they wait? It's a neurological and an emotional thing. And you have to build it like a muscle, learning to wait. And I've met kids that they can wait till the next activity, but they can't wait five. They cannot do it. So I will move it and say, you're doing it next. And in the current activity, I will do it faster than it's ever been done before and assure them every step of the way. And we're almost done and we're waiting for the swing. And you put that there, thank you, because we're waiting for the swing. I will get them through it emotionally and get them to the point they can do it. So that word helps. And I have seen it countless times that when they get it, you say, wait, they, it, it starts the de-escalation and calming. And I think the calendar is a tangible way to convey a very abstract concept. And I think it does quite a bit for anxiety and for hope. How does a calendar system help the child understand both predictability and change? I think one of the um, definite benefits of uh, calendar is that it does provide a sense of predictability in, in their future and their current environment. Um, if everything is scheduled and stays the same, they feel safe. And if something can't stay the same because stuff never stays the same day in and day, day out, week in and week out at school or home. It helps them deal with change because you, you can show them out of the four activities we have scheduled, all of these are the same except this one. And this one, we're going to change. We need to make a change. And having that word is important because it tells them what you want them to understand about change is that it's limited to this specific activity. Their whole day is not in chaos. And sometimes when one thing changes, I think they think their whole day's up for grabs. So using a calendar to teach that one thing has changed helps them understand the extent of novelty they're going to be dealing with, the limits of it, and then you can discuss it, that this is going out. It's changed, but something else is going to come in that you like, and this is what change is. And giving them the sign or the word is important so that what you want is eventually when you sit down and tell your child, we have a change. You've got some time in there where they're calm and waiting. And waiting is an addition, a, a different emotional um, state. It's a good one to be curious and kind of, I'll give you five seconds to tell me what it is, uh, then to have them arrive and find something different. I think you have to prepare for change, we all do, and I think they absolutely have to. And the calendar helps with predictability whether things stay the same or whether they don't. You got a strategy to deal with it. How does a calendar system help with the concepts of past and future? Another thing that's um, really cool about calendar systems is not only does it help the child with the future, it allows the child to have a past. 
Um, I think reminiscing is incredibly important to people. I don't think we enjoy anything as much as sitting down with our cousins and going, do you remember this? And just the, it's the pleasure of, of exchanging things in the past um, or sharing things, because the past is never past. It is always with us. And a calendar system, I, I just love uh, love them because I could teach them um, the word for past. And um, usually you start with finish because that's the first past word you, you learn, that something's finished, it's now moving into the past, and then past, uh, which is, implies something a little further than just one activity. But um, so when you teach the calendar, you also discuss, well, this is in the past. This morning we, we got, we brushed our teeth, and do you remember I dropped your toothbrush? And it, I got the floor dirty. I'm so sorry, that's in the past. But you, then you talk them through a little reminiscing. So when they start their calendar in the morning, it just says toothbrush. But when you review it, always review it, because then you reminisce about something that happened. And what that does that Van Dyke stressed is that it, it moves them out of forever living in the present. They can discuss their future and they can discuss their past. And they are free now to move about in time. They are not forever stuck in the present. And um, I, I loved calendars for that because I could, um, take little things that happened like we, you know, maybe we ran out of toothbrush or maybe I dropped it on the floor or whatever I did. I can save, I can take a picture of the dirty carpet and save it as something that happened in the past and have a little pass box and we pull out, oh, we were menace about things that have happened in the past. And Van Dyke talked about making remnant books, like if you go uh, to a restaurant, you might save the napkin, and you might um, save the menu, or you might save some things, the little ketchup container, but you save things from the past, and, and you can keep them in a box, and they're like memory boxes, or you can put them in a little book, and you can discuss the past, and it helps them reminisce, and a calendar teaches past and present, it teaches the vocabulary, and it teaches the flow of the day, or some kids a weekly calendar, the flow of the week. So some kids will be reminiscing way in the past, and some kids will just be reminiscing from when they brushed their teeth that morning, but you're giving them the opportunity to have a past and to reminisce. This is critical for human beings and, and difficult for charge kids if it's not specifically designed and taught to them. They need this. How is the home calendar system different from the calendar at school? I think it, it's really great um, when there can be a calendar at home and a calendar at school. And um, I, um, my oldest son has an intellectual disability. And so, you know, I'm a avid on calendars. I love them. I do them for a living. And if you saw the calendar he had at school and you saw the one we had at home, you, I, I tried to do the full-blown school calendar, but you know, I'm like going, where's your other shoe? You know, and stuff, home is different. And so what I learned from my own experience and with other families is the calendars are important for home, but there's different topics for home. Um, and I need a different timepiece. I need a much simpler timepiece because I don't have the kind of life, my husband and I did not have the kind of life where our, our evening was planned on an even segment, you know, so, but I knew there were some things he needed to know about the next day and some things coming up that were a change and that some things were finished, in my opinion, that we were really done. He watched, and still does, Ghostbusters to the point I can, I, I know the whole script. But I, there came a point, he could watch a point, some of it, but then it was finished and it was time to move on, to transition. So I needed something at home that transitioned from Ghostbusters. And so I needed a calendar that helped so I, what I needed was trend, something that was Ghostbusters and the next thing. That's what I needed. 
And so that's what it looked like. And there was one uh, family I worked with, um, this child loved his grandmother, but some days she was there and some days she wasn't. And so he had, a, at that point, still a limited time frame. So he didn't, that she, they knew she was coming Friday, but they couldn't say Friday on a Monday. So they had this magnetic picture frame on the side of their fridge. And the night before, if she was coming the next day, they would put her picture in it. And if not, it was blank. And he'd check it, and it was fine. And so what I ask parents is, what do you want to tell your child about the future, you know, or when something's in the past or transitioning, or if there's a change, what, do you, what comes up routinely that you need to tell them? And then we'll figure that out, and then we'll figure out how to package it in a timepiece um, that you could slap on the fridge or somewhere. And uh, so it's available and not, not in the way, because that's important. It can't be portable, because you'll never find it when you need it, you know. So what, what can we do to design a workable timepiece and time concepts for your home that meet your needs? A home calendar is supposed to make things easier, not be one more thing you need to do. I think that um, if, if it stresses you out, it's, it's not working. It's going to, actually, the kid's going to pick up on your stress. The calendar should be fun, inviting, uh, practical. And um, you're already a great parent. So you don't need to have a calendar that looks like the one at school. You need the, cal the calendar um, that you decide works best for your home. How do you create a calendar system? What components should it have? Well, every child needs a calendar. And so uh, one of the things that happen with programming is you decide um, how to make that happen. Uh, the first thing you do, of course, is get the communication system set up for the child, because every child needs a communication system, or what are you going to put in the calendar to represent his day? Um, another thing is you have to have some really cool activities in your day, stuff that's built on the kid's interests, um, something that makes him want to move into the future. Um, you need things that are not only interesting for the child, but clearly designed in a routine so they can tell when it begins and ends. The other thing uh, that you need with a calendar is uh, a timepiece. And so you need to design a timepiece that's attractive and coherent to the child, that has a clear beginning and end, clear sections, and is attractive to the child and reflects his time frame. You also must have a way to show past and future with your calendar system. So some calendar systems have maybe four slots for four activities, but they have um, a finish basket so that you can take each object out and put it in the finish basket. That's showing which ones are in the past. Some have flaps that may go over it. Um, it's individual on what you think is going to be clearest from that child's perspective. And, um, but you must have, for every calendar, a way to show future and past. On some calendars, we put an X when it's finished. And anything without an X is waiting to happen. Um, you might, on a monthly calendar, have X's on what's done. You have a square on today, and the future's blank. You, it just needs to be. Uh, clear enough so if the child approaches the calendar, he knows what's done and what's coming up. Do you have any final thoughts for parents about calendar systems? One thing that um, always remember when you're designing calendars that that first one is not their forever calendar, that one of the things we want to do is um, guide them to the time frame so that a day calendar can become two days, that you can build to a week and a week can build to the month. So the goal is always to move them further into the future and let their past extend further into the past. And the way you do that is de designing time frames that have tangible chunks. Um, they just get more of them. So it is not unusual to see kids move from a day to a week 
to two weeks to a month and an annual calendar in the course of their education. But all calendars use their communication systems. All calendars have an understandable timepiece and all calendars have a way to show past and present. All calendars have time vocabulary that talk about past and present and future. I mean, when you start, the first sign or the first word for future is wait. And then they learn later. And then they um, start learning afternoon in the morning, because that's another future um, way to talk about the future. You just keep introducing um, more con um, the, the language um, more uh, sophisticated ways to, to discuss the future and sophisticated ways to talk about the past. And I think you have to have faith in the kids. It's interesting to me how fast they learned the time vocabulary rather than nouns, because I would think nouns and verbs would be easier, but Dr. Van Dyke commented one time that for children, and I think this is definitely true for charged children, that their emotions are more concrete and tangible than objects around them in the world. And addressing things like weight and change and giving them words in a reassuring manner, um, they, they grasp these like kids who are drowning. I mean, I, I have always been amazed at the time vocabulary these kids pick up. And I, I credit Dr. Van Dyke with designing a system that is tangible and um, very on target for where they are developmentally, that's part of a continuum so that they can keep evolving and evolving and um, attaching it to their emotions. I, th I think uh, I gotta take my hat off to him. It's not the first time. Um, I think the calendar systems are a miraculous intervention for children with charge. For information and resources about CHARGE Syndrome or to make a donation, visit chargesyndrome.org and click the links in the description below.